we asked our Instagram followers who is the best mono green commander, and we can now tell you the top 10 best mono green commanders in MTG. 20, 23 update. Just making it onto the list, we have Toski, Bearer of Secrets. Originally printed in 2021's Kaldheim, this legendary, uncountable, indestructible squirrel attacks each combat if able. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. An indestructible commander? These Toski decks love that equipment. Load up this deck with every equipment known to man. The classics, some of the new equipment and everything in between. The typical Toski deck has over 25 artifacts, so on average leaving some space for mana rocks there could be up to 20 equipment in these decks. Unless exiled or minus one minus one counter to death, indestructible Toski is going nowhere, so building him up to smash through direct to your opponent's face is route one. Lastly, another strategy is all out death touch. Give death touch to all of your creatures, get some more damage through, draw some cards and win the game. And why not combine all these and have a plus 20 plus 20 equipment filled death touch squirrel? What could be scarier? Before we get on to number 9, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG. Subscribing is completely free to do and it helps our channel grow and grow as we head towards 5,000 subscribers. Another way to help support the channel is to sign up to Card Market and use our referral code gathering-the-magic when signing up. Shout out to Yonder Burr for using our code. You love to see it. Moving on to number 9, we have Galta, Primal Hunger. First printed in 2018's Rivals of Ixlan, Galta costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. Many strategies with Galta, the first being that classic green stompy. We're going to ramp like absolute crazy, get those huge creatures out earlier than our opponents, then cast Galta up for super cheap. This can pop off so quickly too, as many big green creatures are cheap to cast and high in power. 10-10 for 5 forest anyone? If we could constantly have a barrage of big creatures or an army of tokens on the field, Galta will not only be cheap to cast, but could be barely affected by command attacks too. Thanks to recent sets, Galta decks also love those vehicles and that crew loving ability. Crew those creatures and run down your opponents for the win. Lastly, Big Bad Galta is a dino, so why not go dinosaur tribal? With over 140 dinos and over 35% of those being green, this is one that could go big. And let's not forget about the upcoming Jurassic Park set. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Next on the list we have Gorglaw, Terror of Cal Sisma. Originally printed in Magic 2019, this legendary bear makes creature spells you cast with power 4 or greater cost 2 less to cast. Whenever Gorglaw attacks, each creature you control with power 4 or greater gets plus 1 plus 1 and gains trample until end of turn. Similar to Galta, we're looking at those big mana spells. Cheap or expensive to cast, we want everything with power 4 or greater on the board, so when it comes to combat, our army is getting that plus 1 plus 1 and trample. A more dirty theme Gorglaw players all go for is those Aldrazi. Notoriously filthy, powerful and expensive to cast, having a commander that enables them to ETB for two cheaper is an easy way to cause havoc and destruction, especially with all of that annihilator. Lastly, lean into cheapening and boosting. Play all those cards that will cheapen the cost of our creatures to cast even more, and play a barrage of boosters to give your creatures plus one plus one and everything else. These Gore Claw decks will leave you wanting Gore More. That was bad even by my standards. In at number 7 we have Vorinclex, Monstrous Raider. Originally printed in the underrated 2021 Kaldheim set, this problematic Phyrexian says if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put on twice as many of each of those counters instead. If an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent, they put half of that many on that permanent or player, rounded down. Of course, these decks are filled with everything plus one plus one counters. From creatures to enchantments, instants, artifacts and more, plus one plus one counters are the most common counter type in MTG, dating all the way back to alpha. Vorinclex decks are so popular because the decks can be so varied, with plus one plus one counters being prevalent in abilities such as evolve, adapt, graft, mentor and over a dozen more, and we all want a commander that will be different and not just the same 100 cards everyone else brings to the table. But if you want to be extra evil, divert that infect. With 25% of infect cards being green loving, we can infect our opponents twice as quick, thanks to Vorinclex doing that doubling. You hate to see it. Narrowly missing out on the top half, we have Gargos, Vicious Watcher. Originally printed in Magic 2020, Hydra spells you cast cost 4 less to cast. Whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell, Gargas fights up to one target creature you don't control. And as expected, these decks revolve all around those Hydras. A big, scary creature. Incredibly, Hydras date all the way back to Alpha with Rock Hydra. 
Whilst the rock is red, the majority of hydras are mono green, with over two thirds of all hydra cards being green and great. And just like Vorinclex, hydras love those plus one plus one counters, so having cards that love plus one plus one counters, cards that will double them, triple them, and even keep those counters on the board are key. And when those hydras are so big, bad and boosted, play all of those fighting cards to trim down your opponent's board state and slither your way to victory. Next on up we have Ayula, Queen Among Bears. Originally printed in 2019's Modern Horizons, whenever another bear ETVs under your control, either puts two plus one plus one counters on target bear, or target bear you control by its target creature you don't control. Just like Gargos, Ayula has a very clear theme, this time being bears. Another creature type famous for being in green, of the near 50 bear cards printed in MTG's history, over 80% fit the bill for Ayula here. Now this deck speaks for itself, you throw in every single bear you can find, some printed from new sets, some classics, and if you want to be cheeky, why not throw in a changeling or two as well. A commander that whilst in my humble and normally wrong opinion is the weakest on this list, has most likely gained votes due to Graham Stark's Bear Force 1 EDH deck on a previous episode of Game Nights. Is it weak? Is it really good? Is it kind of mid? Let me know in the comments below. Just missing out on the bronze medal spot, we have Salvala, Heart of the Wilds. Originally printed in 2016's Conspiracy Take the Crown, this elf scout says whenever another creature ETBs, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. You can pay and tap to add X mana in any combination of colours, where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control. Another green deck, another stompy soldier. We want to make sure we have got the biggest, most powerful creatures to draw off Silvala, so that means making sure we have strong 2 drops, 3 drops, 4 drops and every other drop. Cards like Sheltering Ancient are huge, a 5-5 that only costs 1 and a green, that is crazy. The chance to pay 1 and add potentially 10 or more mana, Salvala will become the target, so have all of that green great protection, as well as those staple artifacts like Signet or Boots. Lastly, this is such a good ability, that having plenty of ways to untap Salvala means you'll gain so much value and win in a flash. For the third best commander, we have Omnath, Locus of Mana. Released way back in 2010's World Wake, Omnath says you don't lose unspent green mana as steps and phases end. Omnath gets plus one plus one for each unspent green mana you have. One common theme in these decks are elves. Elves and green go hand in hand, whilst also synergizing with Omnath so well. Elves will ramp you like crazy, but once Omnath is out, it gives you the chance to have a load of mana dorks to have unspent mana to beef up our elemental. Elves are one of the most common creature types in all of MTG, and with over 60% of the over 600 elves within the Magic Universe, you'll never run out of options for our Omnath. Of course, with an army of elves, the need for lands can be less, meaning a card like Primal Surge could really set you apart at the table. Have your rampy elves in abundance and potentially get 4, 5, 6 or more triggers from that enchantment. But anyway, that's enough talking about those elves. Are you sure about that? Runner up and the second best commander, we have Marwyn the Nurturer. Originally printed in 2018's Dominaria, this elf druid says whenever an elf ETBs under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Marwyn. You can also tap to add an amount of green equal to Marwyn's power. We've just spent the last 60 ish seconds talking about elves, so we'll keep this short. I, I see what you did there. The whole aim of this deck is to throw in as many elves onto the field. The more we have, the stronger Marwin gets, and the more he can either smash through for commander damage, or play big creatures with that potentially big mana ability. And here you can see some of the potentially big spells we can play. Big enchantments, big creatures, and big ways to get ahead or win the game. Lastly, the more Marwin can play those big spells, the more of a threat she'll be to your opponents, so once again be sure to pack in a good amount of protection to keep her on the field. This is my favourite commander of the 10 on the list, but what did get number 1? Winner and the best mono green commander is Finn the Fangbearer. Another printed in 2021's Caldheim set, Death Touch Loving Finn says whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets 2 poison counters. And surprise surprise, these decks go all out Death Touch. A static ability that has been around since 2007's Future Sight set, Death Touch is super common in green, with 20% of all Death Touch cards being green. Death Touch is such an underrated ability, especially in those cheap one-drop creatures. Having a slight protective wall against your opponents who won't want their attacking creatures being killed by a tiny 1-1 snake, spider, insect or anything else. Another route to go is once again leaning into that infect. Something Finn already loves, start poisoning your opponents, then use the very common green loving proliferating mechanic, you could be eliminating your opponents with poison at double speed and getting the victory doubly quick. 
a superb commander and one that I feel is rightly the best mono green commander in MTG. There we have it, that is the top 10 green list. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all things MTG. Check out our link tree for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out, so I'll see you in the next video.